J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Boy, Oh Boy. played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who... Hold it down. Jack isn't here yet. Well, where is he? I just let Mr. Benny and Nichols to make a telephone call. Oh, he's probably talking to his lawyers again. His lawyers? Yeah. Harrington, 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 and Drew. <laughs> it's about that accident Rochester had with the Maxwell a couple of weeks ago. Remember when we were up at Marchfield? Oh, but that was Rochester's fault. He was driving along and smashed right into a truck. Well, Jack claims that truck cheated. It had brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open the door and listen. Okay. Gee, I hope I get my nickel back. It's my life savings. <laughs> Quiet. Shh. Yes? Yes, Rochester was on his way to Marchfield to pick me up. But the accident wasn't his fault. The truck driver didn't stick his hand out. Yes, but... Yes, but... Yes, but... Uh, look, look, who am I talking to? Harrington, 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 or Drew? It's gotta be Drew. Well, look, Mr. Drew, uh, make a note of this right away. The damages to the Maxwell amount to $158.64. What? How can I lend you my pencil? We're talking on the telephone. <laughs> Four names on the door and no pencil. <laughs> well, now look, Drew, I'll tell you what. You get in touch with the trucking company, and if they're willing to settle out of court... What's that, operator? Another nickel for three minutes? Well... Well, now look, Drew, if you get in touch with the trucking company, if they're willing to settle out of court, it's okay with me, but tell them that $158.64 is what I want, and not a penny less. Goodbye. <laughs> What a workout that nickel got. I'll bet the buffalo lost six pounds. <laughs> Duck, fellas, here he comes. Yeah, da -dee -da -dum, da -dee -da -dee. Oh, sorry I'm late, kids. Uh, go ahead, Don, introduce me. Okay. Uh, who are you talking to, Jack? Mm? <laughs> oh, on the phone just now? Oh, uh, oh, that was an old girlfriend of mine from Waukegan. She just got into town. <coughs> Boy, was she a hot mama. Then why did you call her Droop? <laughs> The years have taken their toll. <laughs> anyway, anyway, she's in town and we're stepping out tonight. Oh, stop, will you? We heard you talking to your lawyer about that little accident with the Maxwell. Oh, so you were all snooping around, eh? Well, if you want to know something, it wasn't a little accident. My goodness, look what happened to Rochester. Well, I saw Rochester the next day and he didn't have a scratch on him. Well, fortunately, since then, he's had the hives and he's all bandaged up now. But I'm not bringing that into the case unless I have to. There's just one thing I can't understand, Jack. You say that Rochester bumped into the truck. That's right. The truck driver didn't stick his hand out. Well, I'd say that your brakes must have been in pretty bad shape. Hmm. So if I were the judge, I'd look into that. Well, you're not a judge, and if you don't keep your big fat mouth shut, you won't be an announcer either. <laughs> Let's settle down, get on with the program. See, you'd think that... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, kids, I did it. Harris done it. Congratulate me. Congratulate you? What you did done do, Phil? <laughs> what happened? Well, I passed the midterm examination at night school. Oh, so you're out of the beginner's class, eh? You're not a freshman anymore. Nope, from now on, I'm a semaphore. <laughs> oh, 
First, first you're a freshman, and now you're a semaphore. Let me ask you something, Phil. When are you going to be a sophomore? Who knows? I may quit school before then. Well, I give up. I'll just let semaphore ride. How were the examinations, Phil? Were the questions very tough? I'll say. Here's a sample, Mary. Name the 48 states and give the capital to those that have them. <laughs> those that have them? Phil, every state has a capital. And I doubt very much that you answered that question correctly. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, try me out. Ask me one. Okay, what's the capital of Idaho? Boys Town. That's Boise. <laughs> Boys Town. It's Boise. The reason I remember that is because when I was in Vaudeville, Boise, Idaho was one of my best towns. They loved me in Idaho. Then why did they throw baked potatoes at you? <laughs> they didn't throw them at me. I got paid in potatoes. <laughs> get it straight. Say, Mr. Benny, did you get a big salary in those days? Well, I don't like to brag, kid, but I haven't played Boise since 1927, and I've still got half a sack left. <laughs> And I uh, love my starches, if you know what I mean. By the way, Phil, what other subjects did you have in your examinations besides geography? Well, we had arithmetic and history. Uh-huh. Hey, fellas, here's a tough question I nearly missed. Who crossed the Delaware, Washington or Lincoln? Oh, that's, that stumped you, eh? Yeah, so I flipped the coin, it came out of Washington, and now I'm a semaphore. <laughs> Phil, that word is... No, no, I won't tell him. No, now, Phil, let's, uh... Phil, let's forget about night school and have a band number. Okay. Say, Phil, tell Jack about that new subject you're taking up. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give you the hot news, Jackson. You know what I'm studying this term? French. French? Get a load of this. Jer, mon, jay, la, fenetra. Oh, very good. What does that mean, Phil? I ate the window. You, you ate the window? Yeah. Well, what the heck do you want to eat a window for? You eat bread, you eat rolls, you eat cake. Wait till I learn them, till then I eat the window. Well, here's a tip for you, Phil. Stay out of French restaurants. You better stay out of them, too, till you learn the language. Oh, I can read French. Come on, Phil, let's have your band number. <laughs> Tell him what happened to you at Gaston's the other night. Oh, that could happen to anybody. Come on, Phil, play. Well, wait a minute. What was it, Mary? Well, you know how Jack likes to show off. Oh. <laughs> well, we sat down at the table, and naturally, the menu was all in French. All in French, all in French. <laughs> For forget it. <laughs> and what happened? Jack ordered a nice, thick, juicy, watch your hat and coat with mushroom sauce. <laughs> Well, eventually, I got to stay. Uh, go ahead with your number, Phil. I've got to go out in the hall and call up my lawyer. Has your lawyer got a phone? There's a phone in the barber shop downstairs from his office. <laughs> They'll call him. Don't worry. All right, hit it, Phil. Now, look, Mr. Drew, uh, you tell the trucking company that if they don't settle right now, I'll take them to court first thing in the morning. Postpone it till Wednesday. What do you want to postpone it for? Oh, Harrington is wearing your suspenders. <laughs> well, you can try the case with your pants at half mast. Be there tomorrow morning. <laughs> no wonder they call him Drew. <laughs> now, Drew, Drew, tell the trucking company... What's that, operator? Tell the truck company I want $158 to straighten the chassis, $8 for a pair of headlights, 64 cents for a wing for the on the radiator. Goodbye. Hmm. He 
people don't stick their hands out, they've got to pay. What are you mumbling about? Oh, this darn case has got me all upset. Anyway, that was High Neighbor, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Very good, Phil, although it was a little loud. Phil? What? I say it was a little loud. Well, how do you know it was loud? You were out in the hall and couldn't even hear it. I couldn't hear your band? Phil, you play in the Biltmore Bowl of the Biltmore Hotel here in Los Angeles, don't you? Yeah. Well, I know some people who live at the Biltmore that haven't been able to sleep since you opened, and the Biltmore, I mean, is in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> And I'm not kidding. Well, it's their own fault. They ought to close their windows. Oh, fine. You know, like I said, they ought to manger la fenêtre. That's eat the window, you semaphore. <laughs> We're two words ahead of that semaphore there. Now, let's get on with the show. Let's, let's get on with the show here. Come on. Where... Now, let's see, where, where are we? Boise, Idaho. We are not. Well, someone just hit me with a potato. I don't care, we're in Hollywood. Now, let me announce our play. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for our dramatic offering this evening, the Benny Retreaded Thespians <laughs> are going to present an original mystery melodrama entitled The Fright Wig Murder Case, or He Died With His Tupac. Now, I will play the part of Detective Captain O'Benny, as fearless a bloodhound as ever sniffed a clue. Phil Harris will be Sergeant O'Reilly, my assistant sniffer. Mary, you're going to be the wife of the murdered man. And Dennis, you're going to be the victim. Gee, there's no future in that. I'm going to be your wife. What have I got? Quiet. Now, let's see. I want a bigger part, Mr. Benny. Why don't you lay on the floor and be the murdered man? I wish I could. My feet are killing me. <laughs> Uh, who else? Oh, yes, Don, you're going to be the butler. Oh, every time we do a mystery, I'm the butler. Why can't I be a detective? Because any man that can't look over his stomach is apt to overlook a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Say, <laughs> Say that, that's all right. That line was pretty clever, eh, Mary? What do you care? You saved your money. Well, I liked it. Now, before presenting our mystery, folks, let me give you a brief synopsis of what happened up to now. On the night of January 24th, A.D., after dinner, Mr. Homer J. Frightwig, a social lion, was found murdered in his den. Just before the murder, his wife was in the room reading a copy of Live Alone and Like It, which may have thrown her a thought. <laughs> the victim was playing solitaire when he was suddenly interrupted by a lead kibitzer. <laughs> now, who committed this crime? <laughs> Was it the chauffeur? No, no, I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. Innocent. Was it the butler? I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. What do you mean you didn't do it? At the time of the murder, I was in my neighborhood grocer's buying a package of jello with a new locked in flavor. Oh, yeah? Please believe me. It's America's favorite gelatin dessert, and it's economical, I tell you. Eek, 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 eek. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now pull yourself together. Was it suicide? No, no, I didn't kill me. I didn't kill me, I tell you. <laughs> what? Me is my best friend. I love me and me loves I. You gotta believe me. <laughs> and now the wife, Mrs. Homer J. Frightwig. Did you or did you not kill your husband? I hated him. I loathed him. I despised him. So that. Night, I... Stop! We can't give it away, folks, but this mystery will go on immediately after a song by Dennis Day. Sing, Dennis, I'm going out and call Harrington, 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 and Drew. <laughs> Remember well as the shadows fell, a light of hope in their eyes. And though I'm far away, I still can hear them say, Thumbs For when the dawn comes
But we'll tend his sheep Our valley will bloom again And Jimmy will go to sleep In his own little room again There'll be bluebirds over The white cliffs of Dover Tomorrow just you wait and see was The White Cliffs of Dover, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our mystery melodrama, The Frightwig Murder Case, or... <laughs> now, as the scene opens... Uh, lay down on the floor, Dennis. Uh, you're the murdered man. Lay right there on your back. If I lay on my back, I'll snore. You're getting paid, and you'll stay awake till the program is over. <laughs> now, as the scene opens, we find Detective Captain O'Benny and Sergeant Phil O'Reilly in their office at police headquarters. Curtain. You see. There's the phone, O'Reilly. Oh, really? <laughs> Never mind, I'll take it. Hello, police headquarters. Hello, I want to talk to Detective O'Benny. That's me, what is it? Uh, my name is Mrs. Homer J. Frightwig. I want you to come over to my house right away. My husband has been shot. Oh, really? Is that for me, Cap? I said, oh, really, O'Reilly, shut up. <laughs> now, madam, what makes you think your husband was shot? He's laying on the floor and there's an extra buttonhole in his shirt. <laughs> There is, eh? Well, I'll be right over. And don't make any more buttonholes till I get there. See you in a few minutes. Okay, Cap. Bring some white rock. <laughs> I ought to bring some aspirin for that cold ear. <laughs> Goodbye. What happened, Cap? Homer J. Frightwig has just been murdered. It's up to me to find out who did it. I think there's a woman in the case. A woman, eh? Well, you know the old saying, manger la fenêtre. That's cherchez la femme. <laughs> now, you stay here, Sarge. I've got work to do. I'll take the patrol wagon. You can't. The boys are delivering beer in it. <laughs> oh, then I'll take the squad car. And I'll solve this case, or my name ain't... <laughs> well, here it is. This is the place, all right. Open up in the name of the law. This is police headquarters. Doggone, I forgot to release the brake. <laughs> Well, I'll try it again. Better come with me this time, Sarge. Let's go. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Pick up some pretzels. We got a barrel left over. <laughs> that is all. Step on it, Sarge. We got to solve this case and get back. This must be the place, Sarge. Open up in there. Come on, open up. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, eh? Make a note of that, Sarge. Okay, Cap. Now, come on, you. Where's the murdered man? That ain't a brass rail you got your foot on. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, pardon me. That's okay, Mr. Benny. Shut up. <laughs> Now, the first thing we got to do is grill the suspect. I thought the Frightwigs lived here. They do. Suspects can be anybody. 
Now, wait a minute. Are you the butler here? Yes, sir. What's your name? O'Reilly. O'Reilly? Shake hands with O'Reilly. O'Reilly, 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 O'Reilly. <laughs> now, let's get on with the case. Wait a minute, who's this? Are you Mrs. Frightwig? No, I am the French maid. The French maid, eh? Well, tell me, where were you at the time of the crime? Je n'en sais rien du tout. J'étais dormi dans ma chambre et j'entendais un bruit terrible. Alors, je m'habillais immédiatement et je descendais. Hmm. Je ne sais absolument de ce crime féroce. Je suis innocent. Je vous affirme complètement innocent. Il faut que vous me croyez. Hmm. Translate that, Sarge. Are you kidding? <laughs> Well, you're studying French, aren't you? What was the maid doing tonight? She didn't eat the window, that I know. <laughs> A fine help you are. Now, let's get to work here. Where is Mrs. Frightwig? Here she comes now! Good evening, gents. What's all the commotion? Oh, hello, Mrs. Frightwig. I'm here to find out who killed your husband. Oh, let's not talk shop, Cappy. Come on over here on the sofa and sit down. None of that, Mrs. Frightwig. I represent the long arm of the law. Well, wrap it around me. I'm lonesome. <laughs> I haven't got time for that. I have, but I'm a married man. Quiet, Sarge. Now tell me, madam, where were you at the time of the murder? Back of a gun, minding my own business. Back of a gun, eh? Then you admit you killed your husband. Sure, I admit it. Uh-huh. And why did you kill him? He was always singing shortening bread. Oh. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves I know how it goes. <laughs> well, I don't blame you, Mrs. Frightwig, but I still have to arrest you in the name of the law. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Nobody leave this room. Come in. What do you want here, fellas? Pardon me, but we're looking for Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny, but you'll have to wait. I'm right in the middle of a play. Well, you'll have to stop your play. This is important. Now, wait a minute, fellas. What's going on here? Who are you? I'm Harrington. I'm Harrington. I'm Harrington. I'm Drew. <laughs> oh, my lawyers, eh? Now, look, fellas. We're I want here you to tell you, my good man, that you are in the soup. The what? You're in the soup, the soup, the soup. You're in the soup, the soup, the soup. You tell him, Droop. You're in the soup. You're in the soup. What do you mean, I'm in the soup? Well, let's review the facts. Whereas, you've got to admit that a truck was hit at a certain arterial junction. Whereas, oh, that looks they claim that your chauffeur just wouldn't pull over or mayhap his brakes wouldn't function. Oh. Whereas, they state that your Maxwell was minus an Axel, thus knocking our case for a loop. To wit, you're in the soup, the soup, the soup, the soup, the soup, the soup. Now stop. Now look, gentlemen, it wasn't Rochester's fault. The truck driver didn't have his hand out. He didn't have his hand out. Poor lad. Poor lad. Well, I would say that things for him look bad. Look bad. What is this anyway? For his ugly crime, he surely will serve time And then hang by the neck until death Until death, he will hang, he will hang until death Oh, no, 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 I don't want the truck driver to hang, fellas Now, let's get this straight Rochester started out from Sunset Boulevard and Vine Street to pick me up at March Field And everything was all right until he got to Figueroa Street Figaro? Yes. Figaro, 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 Thirty days, thirty days, you get Billy Gadusha, Shinamarusha, Balderalda, all thirty days, thirty days. Heaven's sake, thirty days, you get Billy Gadusha, Shinamarusha, Balderalda, all thirty days. <laughs> 
Now that's about the silliest. <laughs> I'll be darned. Fine lawyers I've got. Come on, let's finish the sketch. Yeah, who killed me? We'll never know, Dennis. Play, Phil. Here's a grand jello treat, friends, that your family will add to their list of favorite desserts the very first time they taste it. And it's one of Mary Livingston's own favorites, too. A beautiful, tempting dessert called Cherry Flake Jello. All you need to make it is a can of grapefruit sections and one package of cherry jello. Just dissolve a package of Jell-O imitation cherry flavor in one pint of hot water and grapefruit juice. Turn into a shallow pan and chill until firm. Next, break the glistening Jell-O into tiny flakes with a fork. Then pile lightly into sherbet glasses, garnish with grapefruit sections, and serve. The result will be a tempting blend of canned grapefruit and rich crimson cherry Jell-O, a treat the whole family will want to enjoy time and time again. Many grocers are featuring canned grapefruit and cherry Jell-O all next week. So get both and make up this swell dessert. But remember when you buy to get genuine Jell-O, because Jell-O's new process locks in its extra rich flavor. This is the last number of the 17th mm. program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday at the same time. Say, Mary, do you want to come to my house for dinner tonight? Uh, yeah, what are we going to have? Oh, Rochester picks up some baked potatoes and a nice Virginia ham. Oh, you played Richmond, too. Yeah, I went over big there. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program is written by Bill Morrow and Ed Beloyd. Have you plenty of Jell-O puddings in the pantry? If you haven't, better get several packages tomorrow so the family can keep on enjoying those grand pudding treats they love so much. There's Jell-O chocolate pudding, one of the smoothest, creamiest puddings you ever tasted. And it has such a rich, mellow flavor, especially developed for Jell-O puddings by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. Tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch puddings. Jell-O puddings are just like grandma's, only more so. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. K-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Call Out the Marines. Grandma's day, when Grandma wanted to serve the folks a particularly fine dessert, the dessert she chose was pretty apt to be rich, shimmering Jello. And today, housewives still reach for that familiar red-lettered package, still depend on Jello for their most tempting treats. Yes, Jello is now more than ever America's favorite gelatin dessert, because Jello today is better than ever. That famous Jello flavor has a new vividness, a new thrill to it. It's now locked in, protected for your pleasure by a new and exclusive Jell-O process. A process that locks Jell-O's intriguing goodness right into the tiny Jell-O particles and gives you an exciting new richness and extra delicious flavor that will have you shouting hurrah for the first time you taste it. But why not prove all this for yourself? Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no sweet, fruity aroma, no sign of escaping flavor. Then dissolve the Jell-O just as you would in making a Jell-O dessert. And notice how the captive flavor rushes out marvelously rich. Ask your grocer for several packages of Jell-O tomorrow and discover for yourself how Jell-O's new process makes Jell-O better than ever. That 
was Call Out the Marines, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, inasmuch as this evening marks the halfway point of our radio season, I think it only fair that we pay tribute to the man who has contributed his invaluable services to the Jell-O show. Well. A man upon whose broad shoulders rests the burden of maintaining the high comedy level of this program. Gee. And here he is, folks, our sound effects man, Mr. Virgil Reimer. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is this? Hello again, this is Virgil Reimer talking. And folks, I want to tell you this is the happiest wait day Wait a minute, my... wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, what's going on here, Don? Well, Jack, I thought the public might be sort of tired of hearing me introduce you week after week. So for a switch, I thought I'd introduce one of the men behind the scenes. Oh, Oh, you thought you'd pull a little surprise on your old boss, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly fell for it. I did. I did at that. <laughs> well, Don, um, I've got a little surprise for you, too. Uh, remember one day in New York when I was having lunch with Harry Von Zell? Uh-huh. And you got all upset about it, and I told you not to worry? Yes. Well, knit your eyebrows, brother. The heat's on again. <laughs> Now, let's get going with the program. Okay. Jello again. This is Virgil Reimer talking. And, folks, a funny thing happened to me on the way... Virgil! To... Go away, will you, and stick to your sound effect. Oh, give him a chance, Jack. After all, I introduced him, so let him say a few words. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Virgil, but make it snappy. Thanks, chum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio. I was walking down the street. <laughs> hmm. And the traffic was something terrible. Oh, for Pete's sake. When all of a sudden, a panhandler walked up and asked me for a nickel for a cup of coffee, so I gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. Now, listen, Virgil. Just then, it started to rain. <laughs> rain? The wonder it didn't thunder. Now cut that out! <laughs> All right, Virgil, you gave the panhandler a nickel, so what happened? It was a lead nickel, so he took out his gun and killed me. Oh. I thank you. Oh. That was very clever, Virgil. Now get up off the floor and go back to your clinks and clanks. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What's the sound man doing on the floor? Virgil? Oh, he's just trying to be funny. Everybody working for NBC wants to be a comedian. Well, what's wrong with that? Give the kid a chance. Listen, Mary, comedians are born, not made. Take me, for instance. I got the biggest laughs you ever heard when I was only three months old. <laughs> What'd you do, make off like a fan dancer with your diapers? <laughs> No, I used to stick my feet in my mouth and roll around like a rubber ball. I can go along with a gag, <laughs> sister. <laughs> Jack, uh, Jack, you say comedians are born and not made. Now, did you get into show business as a comedian? No, no. As a matter of fact, Don, I started out as a concert violinist. You started out as a janitor at the Barrison Theater in Waukegan. As a janitor? Yes, I found an old picture of you and you were holding a broom. I was holding that broom because I was cast as a witch in a Halloween play. <laughs> That takes care of the broom. Good. Now explain the dustpan. <laughs> hmm. Well, you got me in a corner again. You know, someday I'd like to broadcast from a roundhouse. You know? <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. How's the old gent with the gray hair? He's fine. I just got a letter from my dad this morning. <laughs> Phil means you. I know who he means. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for asking, Phil. Say, uh, Phil, how are you coming along with your French lessons? Have you learned anything new? Oh, yes. How's our French scholar progressing? Well, remember last week how I learned to say je manger la fenêtre? Yes, you ate the window, yes. <laughs> yes, I remember. Well, get a load of this one. Je dorme dans la encrière. Very good. Very good, Phil. What does that mean? I sleep in the inkwell. <laughs> What? What are you talking about? You sleep in the inkwell. He must have had a fight with Alice. 
Look, Phil, as long as you're studying French, why don't you learn something that makes sense? Jackson, it's a tough language. I gotta take it any way I can get it. <laughs> All right, sleep in the inkwell. Eat the window. It's your life. <laughs> All I ask is that you don't show off when Humphrey Bogart gets here. Humphrey Bogart? Is he going to be on the program tonight? Yes, we're going to finish the murder mystery we started last week. And Bogart has had a lot of experience along that line in pictures, so I thought he'd be just the right guy for my assistant. Uh, let me get this straight. Humphrey Bogart is going to be your assistant? Yes. That is, he's going to be one of my assistants. Phil will be my first assistant, and Bogart will help Phil. It'll work out fine. Now, Dennis... Yes, please? Hmm. Uh, you, of course, are going to be the murdered man, and you'll have to lay on the floor again tonight. I figured on that, so I wore my old clothes. You can't wear old clothes. You're supposed to be Mr. Homer J. Frightwig, a wealthy stockbroker. Have you seen the market reports lately? <laughs> That's not the point. Anyway, take this carnation and put it in your buttonhole so you look a little more convincing. And here's another Say, thing. Say, uh, Jack, he's here. Who? Who's here? Oh, well, hello, Humphrey. Hello, Jack. Glad to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, that star of Warner Brothers Pictures, Mr. Humphrey Bogart. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Humphrey, it's darn nice of you to come over here tonight and help us solve our little murder mystery. I'm glad to do it, Jack. I heard you play last week, and I figured somebody should do something about it. <laughs> Good, good. <laughs> Say, Humphrey, we'll start casting in a minute, but uh, first I want you to meet the members of my gang. Uh, this great big fellow here is Don Wilson. It's a pleasure, Don. Put her there, Humphrey. Out! <laughs> Watch out, Don. He's as strong as a three-cent cigar. You ought to know. Quiet. <laughs> and, Humphrey, this is Mary Livingston, our little comedian. Uh, say something funny for Mr. Bogart, Mary. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, shake hands with him anyway. Okay. Glad to know you, Miss Livingston. Put her there. Ouch! <laughs> Mary. And this is Dennis Day, our young tenor, and Phil Harris, our musical genius. Hiya, fellas. Bonsoir! Come on, tally boo, Humphrey. <laughs> Humphrey? <laughs> Is that French? Humphrey? <laughs> Phil. Phil, uh, stop, stop showing off. You know? you know, Mr. Bogart, I took my girl to see you and all through the night, and did you make a hit with her? Did you make a hit? <laughs> Dennis. Ah, oh, she kind of liked me, eh, kid? Well, she talks out of the side of her mouth now, if that means anything. <laughs> Well, that's real hero worship. I guess we can get started with the casting, Humphrey. Say, where's Rochester? I'd like to see him. Oh, he won't be with us tonight, Humphrey. He has a cold. He'll be all right next week, though. He's got the strongest cough medicine. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, let's get started. Uh, you've met everybody. What about me? Am I an old shoe or something? <laughs> Believe me, Virgil, he's not interested in meeting you. But if it'll make you happy, all right. Humphrey, this is Virgil Reimer, our great sound man. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Reimer. I've admired your work on this program for a long time. You see? <laughs> okay, okay. Now, let's get on with our sketch. Uh, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to present the second episode of our mystery melodrama, The Frightwig Murder Case, or... That rug will have to go to the cleaners. <laughs> now, Dennis Day will be Mr. Frightwig, the victim. Howdy, folks. Lay down. <laughs> Mary will be his wife, who misses him now, but didn't when she shot him. And Don... Yes, Jack? You're going to be Jurgen the butler. Only this week, I wish you'd be a little more highbrow. Can you talk with an English accent? Well, I'll try. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies. the next time you toddle down to your neighborhood grocer, why don't you ask the clerk for a package of jello? <laughs> package? You will find that it comes in six terribly divine flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and pip-pip. <laughs> Don, if it weren't for the fact that you were talking about our product, I'd say that your accent was about as English as Sambo and Tambo, you know? <laughs> now, where are we? 
Oh, yes. I, of course, will play the part of Detective Captain O'Benny of police headquarters. Phil Harris will be my assistant. And Mr. Humphrey Bogart will be Phil's assistant. Now, in this drama... Just a minute, Jack. Hold it. Would you mind repeating that? Why, certainly. <laughs> I said, uh, I'll be Detective Captain O'Benny. Phil will be my assistant. And you'll be Phil's assistant. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, I'd like to speak to you about that. Uh-oh. -uh. What are you uh on about? Why, what's, uh, what's on your mind, Humphrey? Well, frankly, I don't like the idea of being Phil's assistant. Well, all right, then you can be my assistant and Phil can be yours. Now, in this drama... Just a second, Blue Eyes. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, what, uh, what is it, Humphrey? Now, let's get this straight. Here's the way it's gonna be, see? I'm the captain, Phil's gonna be my assistant, and you're gonna be his assistant. Hmm. But, uh, but Humphrey... Now, look, I don't want any trouble. I'm a nice, easy-going guy, but I didn't come over here to get kicked around. Well, who kicked you? I mean... <laughs> Did you kick him, Dennis? Did you kick him, Don? You know what I mean. I'm going to be the captain, and that's final. All right, all right. And you don't have to grab my coat while you're talking to me. <laughs> now, let go. And another thing, Mr. Bogart, I'm paying you for being here on this program tonight so you can be a little more civil. Oh, are you going to pay me? Yeah. Well, I'm not exactly paying you in cash, but I was going to send you a lovely present. A fountain pen or... or something. Now, you send me a fountain pen, I'll squirt it right in your eye. <laughs> hmm. Is that so? Oh, Jack, let him be the captain. What else can I do? <laughs> Got a good mind to punch him right in the nose. Well, why don't you? Because he's carrying a gun. He's what? A gad. He's packing a gad. <laughs> well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Humphrey Bogart will play the part of Detective Captain O'Benny. I want my own name. All right, you'll be O. Bogart. <laughs> and Phil, I will be your assistant. I, I, are you happy? Yes. Oh, well, then let go of me. How many times do I have to tell you? Now, this exciting drama, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after a number by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Play, Phil. Here's my part, Humphrey. Get familiar with it. Pedal rendered by Phil Harris and his orchestra. A render meaning to tear apart. <laughs> That's a Lulu! Virgil! Now, Virgil, get away from that mic. And stop trying to be funny on my program. What's the matter? Do you see the handwriting on the wall? <laughs> now, listen, Virgil. Virgil, if I have any more trouble with you, you're getting out of here. 
Also like to get rid of Bogart. What was that? What did you say? I said when I was a kid, I had a go-kart. <laughs> Do you mind if I had a little fun? <laughs> if I hadn't given a quart of blood to the Red Cross, I'd tear him to pieces. <laughs> A quart of blood? Yes. You've been down there ten times and I haven't even found a vein yet. They'll find one, don't worry. Now settle down, everybody. Let me announce our play. Pardon me, Jack. I'm announcing it. All right, announce it. Boy, I never saw such a ham. <laughs> Ought to have my head examined for inviting him over here. And will you cut out that mumbling? Listen, I've been talking to myself for 20 years. I'm not going to stop now. <laughs> Go ahead, announce the play. <clears throat> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to offer the second episode of our mystery melodrama entitled The Fright Week Murder Case, or All Through the Night. <laughs> <laughs> Had to give his new picture a plug. I like the picture, though, but what I could have done with his part, boy. Jack, pipe down. Oh, poof. <laughs> now, as you may remember, last week, Mr. Homer J. Frightwig was found murdered in his den. He was shot several times. In fact, his chest looked like a well-patronized punch board. Boy, I'd have gotten a yell with that line. A yell. They'd have screamed at me. Virgil! <laughs> Go ahead, Humphrey, you gangster. Captain O'Benny was called into the case, but was unable to make any headway. So this week, I will solve the crime. I'll bet. Go ahead, you thug. As the scene opens, we find Cap Detective Captain O'Bogard and his two assistants... Had to make a mistake. Had to make a mistake. <laughs> we find Detective Captain O'Bogard and his two assistants... Yeah. <laughs> ...in their office at police headquarters. <laughs> Kirk, music. <laughs> Oh, Sergeant O'Hara. Yes, Captain. What's new on the Fenchel robbery? Did you find out if the chauffeur had anything to do with it? Well, it couldn't have been the chauffeur, Cap. He had an airtight alibi. Alibis, alibis. This is the third month of the investigation and we're no further than we were when we started. Something has got to be done, I tell you. I want action. Do you understand? Action. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not scaring me, I can tell you that. <laughs> now, listen, O'Hara. What makes you think the chauffeur is innocent? Well, at the time of the robbery, he was out of town. We traced him as far as Altoona, Pennsylvania. Altoona, eh? Boy, what a hit I used to be in that town. <laughs> Stopped the show every night. Well, what happened after he left Altoona? Well, we traced him as far as Chicago, and then we lost track of him until last week when he turned up in Los Angeles with a blonde. With a blonde, eh? Shut up! Hmm. <laughs> All right, but if you ask me... There's a phone. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, take it. <laughs> Such a little guy, I can't understand why I don't slug him. You're a coward. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Hello, hello, police headquarters. Captain O'Bogard speaking. Hello, Bogey. This is Mrs. Homer J. Frightwig. Oh, yes, yes. What is it, Mrs. Frightwig? Listen, Kathy, why don't you come over and investigate my husband's murder? Oh, it's no use. I can't find any clues. Well, drop in anyway. It's a rainy afternoon. Come on over. Okay, madam. But I'm going to find out who killed your husband. Well, if you're real nice, I'll tell you. Come on over. Yes, ma'am. I'll be there in a few minutes. Swell. Bring some olives. I've got the toothpicks. So long. So long. Who was that, Cap? Yeah, who was it? Fine part I've got. <laughs> Wish I had my violin with me. <laughs> well, who was it? That was Mrs. Homer J. Frightwig. Come on, men. We're going over to her house right away. And I'm going to solve this crime, or my name ain't Do Bogart. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Enjoy your ride. You'll soon be walking. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> well,
Well, here we are, Cap. Yeah, this is the place, all right. Break the door down, oh, Benny. Yes, sir, stand back. Open this door, or I'll break it down. Open this door, or I'll break it down. Well, what are you waiting for, Virgil? Break down the door, please. You won't hear a single splitter until you apologize. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry I bawled you out. Now go ahead with the door. Very good. Well, who's this? Good evening, gentlemen. Did you ring? Ring? This guy's the butler, Cap. I know who he is. Now listen, you, where's the body? That ain't a bearskin rug grinning at you. Hmm. That's Mr. Frightwig, all right. And he's laying there just the way he was shot. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Some tough guy. I bet anything he faints. What was that? Well, come on, Humphrey. Find out who done it. Just a minute, miss. Who are you? I am Fifi, the French maid. Oh, yeah? Now, listen, Fee. My name is Fifi. Well, I'm in a hurry. Sit down, will you? <laughs> Say, let me talk to her, Cap. I speak the language very fluent. Fluent? <laughs> Now listen, Fifi, what do you know about this murder? Je ne sais rien du tout de ce meurtre. Je suis seulement la bonne ici, et naturellement, je ne l'ai pas commis. Oui, oui. <laughs> je suis dans ce pays que fort peu de temps, et je ne connais pas beaucoup de monde. Je mène une vie solitaire. Oui, oui. <laughs> J'aimerais bien un rendez-vous avec un Américain. Uh, Voulez-vous me rencontrer at the corner of Sunset and Western at 8 o'clock? Oh, what'd she say, Harris? I don't know, but I'll be there. <laughs> so will I. She must have a friend. Fine policeman. Why does you get on with the case and grill Mrs. Frightwig? Where is she? Here she comes now! Well, good evening, gents. Pull up my husband and sit down. Now, listen, Mr. Frightwig. You keep out of this. All right, all right. I'm going to take a look around this house, see if I can find some clues. Now, tell me, Mrs. Frightwig, what do you know about this murder? Grill me, Cap, grill me. What's on your mind? Now, I want the truth. Did you shoot your husband? Couldn't have been Cupid. There's no arrows in him. I don't believe you killed him, Mrs. Frightwig. And we're going to stay right in this house until we find out who committed the crime. Okay, boys, how do you like your eggs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say, Cap, Cap, I just heard a noise in that closet. A noise? Yeah, there's somebody hiding in there. It might be the murderer. Let me have your gun. I didn't bring it with me. Here, take mine. Now, thanks. Now, listen, you. We know you're in that closet, so come out. And come out with your hands up. Come out, do you hear? Hello, fellas. <laughs> Surprised? Oh, it's you. What were you doing in that closet, oh, Benny? I'll tell you what I was doing there. I can't keep it a secret any longer. I committed that crime. I murdered Mr. Homer J. Frightwing. What are you talking about? I killed him, I tell you. Killed him, killed him. He was a dirty rat and he had it coming to him. And I'm glad I did it, I tell you. <laughs> glad, glad. You did nothing of the kind. You're just trying to build up your part. I am now. <laughs> Confess, slap the handcuffs on me. Take me to jail. What are you waiting for? What a ham. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Frightwig. Let you and I go out and have a cup of coffee. Okay, Kathy. I'm going with you. No, no, you can't go until you arrest me. I'm a killer. Do you hear a killer? And I also committed the... Oh, I'm nuts. Well, I'll be darned. Hey, where did they go? They went out for some coffee, Mr. Frightwig. Oh. That stupid Bogart doesn't believe I killed you. Well, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Say, do you play gin rummy? Sure. Well, lay down and start dealing. <laughs> okay, hit it, boys. you be proud, won't the family be pleased when you serve this grand dessert? Imperial Peach Mold, a swell jello treat that's bound to win you compliments galore. 
get a treat that's delightfully easy to make. All you do is simply dissolve one package of orange jello in one pint of hot water and peach juice and chill until slightly thickened. Next, fold in one cup of canned sliced peaches drained, or if you wish, a box of quick frozen sliced peaches, freshly thawed. Then mold and chill until firm. And there's a mighty attractive, mighty good dessert. Delicious blend of juicy golden sliced peaches and bright shimmering orange jello. So get a can of sliced peaches or a box of quick frozen sliced peaches from your grocer tomorrow and combine them with orange jello for a really delightful treat. But be sure you get genuine jello, friends, because jello's new locked-in flavor gives you extra richness, makes jello more tempting and delicious than ever. This is the last number of the 18th program in the Courage Jello series, and we will be with you again next Sunday at the same time. Well, Humphrey, thanks very much for coming up here tonight. You kind of took over the program, didn't you? <laughs> I did it that. No hard feelings, Jack. No, no, no. You were very amusing. I'll take him out in the alley and give him a couple of pokes. What was... What was that? I said good night, folks. I always say that. <laughs> good night, folks. Humphrey Bogart appeared on our program tonight through courtesy of Warner Brothers Pictures. The tune called out the Marines is from the picture of the same name. Jell-O puddings, please. Just say that to your grocer tomorrow, friends, and see if you don't make the acquaintance of some of the swellest desserts you ever tasted. Jell-O puddings. Rich, creamy puddings made by the same folks who make Jell-O. There's Jell-O vanilla pudding. Smooth, mellow, and thrillingly rich. Tops for delicate, tempting flavor. And not only grand as a pudding, but perfect as a creamy filling for pies, tarts, and cakes. So tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, get Jell-O puddings, too. They're just like grandma's, only more so. The Jell-O program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles.